Hello students, this is the continuation of the atmosphere and environment chapter and in this part we are going to see how can we reduce the air pollutants from the atmosphere. So there are certain procedures which are used to reduce air pollution such as reducing effect of acid rain by liming, catalytic converters and flue gas desulfurization. In the first method, Liming procedure is basically a procedure of powdering limestone or either calcium carbonate into all those water bodies such as lakes which are acidic in nature and by pouring calcium carbonate into them will neutralize those all water bodies. This is how the reduction of effect of acid rain can occur by liming but it's a very very expensive procedure and uh, somehow its uh, effects are very temporary so that's why it's not recommended. If we talk about catalytic converters so how does catalytic converters will help to remove the pollutants in the vehicle exhaust gases? All the exhaust gases are oxides of nitrogen, carbon monoxides, unburnt hydrocarbons. They are the major source of air pollution. They are the major contributors of air pollution. To reduce the air pollution, the exhaust system of most cars are now fitted with a catalytic converter. Now this is the diagram of a cat catalytic converter and how it will work. It will work in such a way that the hot exhaust gas will enter from this part. As they will enter from this part, then what will happen? Here is a ceramic, here is a ceramic material coated with platinum and rubidium catalyzes that hot gases and then as a result after the conversion what will happen carbon dioxide and water and nitrogen dioxide will be produced which are less toxic if we compare them with the hot exhaust gases so in first step, what will happen? The hot ex uh, exhaust gases containing carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, unburnt hydrocarbons are passed over the platinum and rubidium catalyst catalysts in a catalytic converter. In the second step, what will happen? The harmful pollutants are converted into harmless substances. You have to keep this thing in your mind by the redox reaction. And we all know what is the redox reaction. It is basically oxidation reduction reaction, right? So carbon monoxide is oxidized to carbon dioxide how this carbon monoxide in the form of gas will be oxidized and carbon dioxide will be produced carbon dioxide is less harmful less toxic than carbon monoxide if we talk about oxides of nitrogen how can they be converted into less toxic substances so what will happen carbon after catalyzing carbon uh, nitrogen monoxide plus Carbon monoxide will react, both of them are in gaseous state in the catalytic converter. They will react and they will produce nitrogen along with carbon dioxide. So this is how the less toxic substances will be released. Next is unburnt hydrocarbons such as octane are oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. So as a result we will get when this octane in the liquid state will react with oxygen in the gaseous state so as a result we will get carbon dioxide along with water molecules this is not a balanced equation let me balance it out so if we will balance it out so here you can see that two octanes are reacting with 25 oxygens and 16 carbon, mole carbon dioxide molecules along with 18 water molecules will be obtained so if we talk about what are the other measures which are made to reduce the air pollutant which are caused by the um, motor vehicles so they are like uh, if we will use new materials such as lightweight alloys instead of steel to make car bodies so that would be a, an effective measure what will be its effect less fuel is needed to power light car bodies so that's why it will be helpful to reduce pollution next uh, method is Use clean uh, fuels such as methanol and hydrogen, which are, which are also environmental uh, friendly gases. So their effect is that the product of combustions are harmless. When hydrogen burns, only water is produced, which is not harmful uh, for our atmosphere. Next is to use electrical cars. Whenever we are going to use electrical cars, so there, what will happen? The uh, exhaust 
uh, which will emit gases will be less uh, toxic gas emission from that exhaust so this is how there are different measures uh, and they have their certain effects good effects on the environment if we compare them with the other other ones next method or the last procedure mentioned here is flue gas desulfurization first of all you need to understand what are flue gases so it is basically the waste gases are called as flue gases the waste gases which are produced by burning of fossil fuels so whenever fossil fuel undergo combustion so there are a lot of gas emitted so those gases are called as flue gases and the process of removing sulfur dioxide from those flue gases is called as desulfurization process it's a cheaper way to remove sulfur dioxide from the atmosphere or from the waste gases so it's uh, quite uh, good for the atmosphere next is if we talk about its complete plant so a flue gas desulfurization plant is some um, what like this look at this here what will happen this is the purification chamber from here the flue gases enter inside the calcium carbonate this is calcium carbonate chamber and here what will happen there is another pipe connected from where calcium carbonate plus water will be inserted inside it right and then here we are having another chamber and that chamber or that chimney will be able to release clean gases such as carbon dioxide and air which are comparatively clean gases if we talk about the complete equations and complete reactions of that plant so what will happen is sulfur dioxide passes through the plant it reacts with the aqueous suspension of calcium carbonate to form solid calcium sulfide and carbon dioxide so its equation will be calcium carbonate in the solid state will react with sulfur dioxide and as a result we will get calcium sulfite along with carbon dioxide now this calcium sulfite which is produced over here in the solid state will be further oxidized to produce calcium sulfate by the atmospheric oxygen so what will happen as a result we will get calcium sulfite reaction with calcium with oxygen in order to produce calcium sulfate which is less toxic now this calcium beside calcium carbonate calcium oxide can also be used for desulfurization in order to use it how are we going to get the reaction for it calcium oxide will react with sulfur dioxide and as a result we will get calcium sulfite and then again this calcium sulfite will be further oxidized and it will produce cal calcium sulfate the next thing is depletion of ozone if we talk about depletion of ozone so first of all we need to understand what is ozone ozone is the allotropic form of oxygen it is a pale blue gas with a pungent odor ozone is considered a pollutant at a ground level but there is a layer of ozone which is not uh, toxic for uh, us instead it is very much beneficial for the earth it is a toxic gas when it is present in the atmosphere when present in concentration above 100 ppm parts per million however in the stratosphere a layer of atmosphere is called a stratosphere at about 25 to 50 km above the earth so ozone becomes very important for us because it protects us from different harmful gases now why this ozone becomes important for us ozone was very first detected in the stratosphere in 1889 this thin layer of ozone acts like a giant sunscreen it filters out some of the harmful ultraviolet radiations which are also called as uv from the sun too much ultraviolet radiations can cause skin cancer genetic mutation and eye damage that is cataracts being formed due to these ultraviolet rays ultraviolet radiations may also be harmful to marine life so what is causing the depletion of ozone in the stratosphere the ozone layer around the earth is fast disappearing scientists have discovered that one of the major causes of ozone depletion is chlorofluorocarbon 
chlorofluorocarbons are commonly called as CFCs. So these are the compounds which are containing elements carbon, fluorine and chlorine in them. Carbon, fluorine and chlorine are present in chlorofluorocarbons. Some harmful ultraviolet radiations from the sun are ab absorbed by the protective layer of ozone. And then the propellants which are present in aerosols such as coolants in a refrigerator and the air conditioner, they release a high number of CFCs into the atmosphere. The CFCs then reach the stratosphere where the protective ozone layer is found and then the chlorine atoms react with the ozone molecules in the stratosphere to form chlorine oxide and oxygen thus destroying the ozone layer very badly. Chlorine will react with ozone. It will produce chlorine oxide along with oxygen. So this is very much harmful for the ozone layer because it is depleting it. In the presence of ultraviolet radiation, CFCs decompose to form chlorine atoms as well. So harmful ultraviolet radiations reach the earth through the holes which are present in the ozone layer due to the depletion. Is there a solution to this problem of ozone depletion? Now this is a very important question to know. Many countries have now agreed to ban the CFCs use. So in 1992, there was one international conference and there they have decided to ban all those compounds, all those products which are containing CFCs. Presently, most of the countries are uh, worldwide, they are still following that rule and they are not using CFCs, they have banned it. However, if the use of CFC is totally stopped at once, but still the depletion of ozone layer will continue why because it will take a lot of years for all those cfcs to be destroyed which are already present in the atmosphere so it is very much dangerous thanks for watching the video